Thank you, Thor. We begin with breaking news this morning. More seismic activity in our region. Some people here in B.C. were jolted awake early this morning after a pair of earthquakes in northern Washington state. Good evening. This is City News at 6 o'clock, and we have a developing story. Eight new presumptive cases of the coronavirus in British Columbia have been announced today. That brings the total in the province to 21. BC's top doctor, Bonnie Henry, spoke with people in Victoria today. Here's what she had to say. When you finally gather enough money to own your own home, the last thing you think you'll need to worry about is major increases in your monthly payments. Well, now we are hearing strata insurance for some lower mainland condos is going to cost upwards of 300% more than previous years, breaking the bank for many families. You want to go two, two, go up the hill. With the mantra of, I think I can, I think I can, climbing the high hurdles of affording your own home is a struggle for any family. But now this young new Westminster couple is going to be hit with an extra $200 bill every single month because of skyrocketing strata insurance. I didn't think it was right when I saw it. I thought it was a mistake. And uh, it's fortunately, um, it's unfortunately not a mistake. For Maria Tuno, this condo was her first purchase and got her into the market. She was proud of what she believed was a smart investment. Yeah, but with massive insurance, premium increases, she's questioning everything. And that's on top of like the stress of being a young family and having all the extra expenses for daycare now and the lost income from maternity leave. So it's... Like, what is the next thing? The provincial government is now being called upon to step in and help owners during what many are calling an insurance crisis. We're taking the time to work with the insurance companies, to work with Stratas, to make sure that if we do come up with something that's going to assist, that it's the right solution. We recognize that there's certainly Strata components, but there's also an insurance component to this, and making sure that we understand how the insurance industry is working. So how does it all work? When demand is less than supply, premiums are level or dropping, which is what's happened in the last decade. When supply diminishes, which is the real number one issue right now, then demand pushes premiums up. Admittedly, it's a complicated process, as Chuck Byrne with the Insurance Brokers Association of BC supply, explains. When he really says supply, it's referring to the money from around the world that is being invested in Canada's insurance market. Right now, there's not as much money coming in, and that's because of a variety of factors, including costly disasters like the Australian wildfires. But another reason for the sudden increase in prices is the number of insurance claims being submitted by BC condo owners. If condo owners and condo councils do not get a handle on their maintenance and reduce the propensity of claims, this problem is going to stay. If we don't get more capacity into the market to insure buildings and unit owners, this problem is going to stay. If we don't get some reasonable legislative change to tighten it all up, make it more accountable for everybody, this problem is going to stay. Burn suggests if action is taken, insurance Hi. premiums could go back down within a year or two. But in the meantime, Hi. owners will have to find a way to foot the cost. In New Westminster, Ashley Burr, City News. The city of Surrey and Uber are continuing to bump heads. Mayor Doug McCallum spoke with reporters earlier today and maintains that Uber is operating in the city illegally because they do not have a business license. Tonight's city council meeting, my best guess, would be heated. McCallum says 18 warnings have been issued over the weekend for non-compliance, and Uber as a corporation has been fined $500 a day since it's been operating in the city. And going forward, drivers who do not comply will give, be given more than just a warning. For those who continue to operate in Surrey, there will be no longer be warning tickets, and any violators caught will be ticketed and face a fine of $500. I support ride hailing. I have said that from day one. I support ride hailing. And I can say the majority of council supports ride hailing. But it has to be on a level playing field with the taxi industry. Despite reiterating to reporters multiple times today that he supports ride hailing, McCallum has actually been very vocal against ride hailing throughout his career as mayor in Surrey. We're going to do everything possible in Surrey um, to stop ride sharing. I, don't, I do not uh, support um, ride hailing. And um, I've been consistent um, for over a year in that and even before that. 
The Ministry of Transportation has issued a short but clear response to McCallum's actions, writing in a statement today. Provincial law is clear no municipality has the authority to block the operation of ride hailing services. The absence of a bylaw or business license in specific municipalities related to ride hailing is not grounds for refusal of the service. We spoke to a few councillors today to get their response. We want a level playing field. We want a level playing field for, for traditional taxi drivers and as well as uh, Uber drivers. They're paying the, the insurance rates they're paying, the traditional taxi companies are paying the much, much higher than what Uber drivers are paying. So uh, we think it's not fair. There's a lot of residents uh, that are looking forward to having ride sharing here in the city. I can tell you over the last few months, we've probably received well over 1,600 emails alone from people in the community that say, look, we want ride sharing and we want it now. So we want to be at par um, with other neighboring communities. If we're throwing up more roadblocks in the city of Surrey, you know, for new innovative things coming here. I think that just doesn't do anything to, to a thriving city that we're trying to build out. We want them to, to charge what we have to charge, according to the Passenger Transportation Board. Why is it fair that an Uber can pick up somebody and charge them only $4 to go to the airport? We can't compete with that. We have to keep our meter running at all times, or we're in breach of this. Mayor McCallum is speaking to this today in Surrey, and I applaud him for standing up for the rights of the small business owners and looking out to make sure that we make a living wage. Throughout the years, we've just asked for the opportunity to make a living wage and coexist with Rideshare on the same level playing field as we have. McCallum said multiple times today that he will not be bringing up a motion on ride hailing tonight at the city council meeting at 7 o'clock, but I have a feeling it will come up. Stay tuned to City News in the next half hour. We'll hear more from Doug McCallum today about his thoughts on ride hailing. Not a chance. It's a common storyline we see in film. David versus Goliath, the little guy against the big guy. But that movie motif is now playing out between actual movie theaters as an independent Vancouver theater pushes back against cinema giant Cineplex over the right to screen blockbuster films. What I'm saying today on camera is something that everyone in my industry knows as a fact and everyone's just afraid to say it. Corinne Lee is the owner and operator of the Rio Theatre in East Vancouver. She's decided to shine the spotlight on what she believes are some less than award-winning practices. Lee has posted a petition claiming Cineplex has an informal arrangement with film distributors that will not allow films to be booked with any competing theaters until the major movie company is done with them. Back in the old days, there were actually regulations that were followed where you would have to wait, you know, maybe up to four to six weeks for something to become available, and that was standard, and we accepted that. But now Lee says her theater is waiting up to six months for a movie to hit the screen. Her petition is calling on Cineplex to stop it's dictating of the market and claims independent theaters are blocked from booking films with distributors. Within a few hours of being posted, the petition has collected more than 2,200 signatures. Distributors don't want to go against the wishes of Cineplex. Um, I don't necessarily blame distributors because they're in a position where they're trying to get their movies out and if the big guy says you know, is basically dictating the rules of who gets these films. In a statement to City News, Cineplex says Cineplex does not own the rights to movies. We license them from Canadian distributors to play in our theaters. It is up to film distributors where they play their movies. They're just passing the buck. They're basically saying that it's the distributors who make the decision and they're denying the fact that they strong arm the distributors. So they're, they're lying. So why now? Well, Cineplex is about to be purchased by Cineworld, a company in the UK. And as that move is made, Lee is hoping they can push the huge company to follow stricter regulations. In Vancouver, Ashley Burr, City News.